annuities payable piecely is arguably one of the most confusing topics in financial mathematics. So I'm going to explain to you the understanding behind it and really try and develop the intuition behind these formulae. And I'm also going to give you the formulae for these annuities payable piecely as well. Okay, so let's start with this annuity, which is a future value annuity paid in arrears, and that's payable piecely at the interest rate I. Okay, for N periods. All right. So first of all, there are two formulas for this annuity payable piecely. And the first one is with respect to I, and the second one is with respect to IP. Okay, so just to prove to you that these two are equal, the only real difference is these two terms. So we know that those are equal because that's how we work out effective interest rates. So we have 1 plus I is normally equal to 1 plus IP over P to the power of P. But now we've just raised both sides by N. So that still holds true, that, that equality still holds true. And so it's clear to see then that those two formulae are equal. Now let's understand what exactly this annuity payable P3 looks like on a number line. Okay, so when we say an annuity is payable P3, it means that we are paying, we are making payments P times per period. So we have N periods and we are making P payments in each period. So if our timeline goes from zero to N and in each of these, we might have one period or two periods all the way up to n periods. But now instead of paying on each nth period, we are paying p times per period. So we have p payments in this first period, p payments in the second period, and so on. So what that would then look like is something like this, where at time period 1 over p, we are making a payment of 1 over p, and at time period 2 over p, we are making a payment of 1 over p again. And then we do this all the way up until the end of the nth period. Now, when we reach the end of the first period, which is 1, what we essentially have arrived at is P over P, because if you just cancel those P's, you get 1. And then again, we are still paying 1 over P. And we pay this all the way up until the end, 1 over P on the last date. And just for continuity, we have NP minus 1 over P. We pay 1 over p over here. So this n is actually np over p. Okay, so this is what this essentially looks like. And I know it might be confusing with uh, variables and with p. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly briefly show you what it would look like if you were paying, let's say, let's say you had five years. So n would be five, and then you were paying half yearly. So p would then be two. So then what that would look like is you would go from zero to time five or five times by two over two. So that's five years, or in other words, 10 half years. And you'd be paying, let's say you paid a value of one rand every year. Then now if you are splitting those up into P payments per year, then you're paying half a rand at each point in your year. So that's at one year, and that is at half a year, or one over two, you're paying one over two, and at one you're paying one over two, and you pay all of that up until your 10th payment. Okay, so let's move on here. Something that is worth noting is that your payment size should match the number of payments. So what I mean by this, let's say your payment size is x, then x matches n. And if, that, if, that, if that's the case, then what also would match is x over p would match NP. So basically what this means is that if you were paying X every period for N periods, then now when you're moving to paying it Pthly instead, then at each P period, you're paying X over P. So what that means then is within each period, you're still paying a total amount of X. You're just paying it in parts P times. So X divided by P. And the reason why now we've multiplied by N by P is because this is, for example, in years, but this is in P periods. And we have P periods within a year. So we have P times by the number of years gives us the total number of P periods. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to deal with 
is really understanding what that annuity represents or what it's similar to. So if we look at this timeline for, for the typical cash flow for that type of annuity, then you'd notice that you could also represent this timeline by the following annuity. You'd have an annuity, a future value annuity in arrears, and you have NP payments, and this is at an interest rate of IP over P, which is the effective interest rate in every P period, and that you would divide by 1 over P. Okay, because you're paying 1 over P each P period. Okay, so let's use this and write out the formula for it and see how we can come back to arrive at that formula. Okay. So here's this formula, and we know that this would then be equal to 1 over P times by 1 plus IP over P to the power of NP minus 1 all over IP over P. Okay, so now what we could then do is we could cancel those P's, and then we could substitute in 1 plus i to the power of n for 1 plus ip over p to the power of n plus b. And if we do that, then we get 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 over ip, which is then equal to s n ip. Okay, and that is exactly the same as this. And so then what we can conclude is that that is equal to that. And we using these two formulae to prove that. Okay. Or rather, this gives us something that is quite similarly related to this formulae, this formula. And then we simply manipulate it so that we can then make the jump to that formula and then conclude that that annuity is equal to that annuity. Okay. So what's really the use then? Well, it's just another way to write your annuity. So if you know that you're going to be having an annuity payable peakly, or let's say payable half yearly, quarterly, um, monthly, whatever it is, then instead of having to use this formula every time, you can simply use this, you can simply use the formula that corresponds to that annuity, which is this one over here or this one over here. But really, this annuity is very much related to that one. It's, it's, it's the most, it's the one that we typically know how to use or the tip one that we typically have learned how to use so far but now we're making the jump to say that we could actually just be using this and the reason that helps is then we don't really have to change anything in the numerator from what it otherwise would have been if we were to remember that annuity over there where p is simply one so we are making one payment per period so all that we then do to get from our one payment per period to having p payments per period the only thing we have to change in our formula is this bottom interest rate. So if you remember, this annuity is equal to 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 all over i. So now all that we have to do to change from having one payment per period to p payments per period is instead of dividing by the effective interest rate per, per nth period or per period when we are paying only n times, we are now dividing by the interest rate, the nominal interest rate, payable peakly. Okay, so I've tried my best to explain this concept to you. And if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments below. I know this is a very confusing topic and it's something that I took a long time to really understand deeply. So if, if I maybe didn't explain anything well enough, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. I'll try my best to tend to them. And I'm just going to quickly leave the formula on the screen for those other annuities and the same logic really applies to those. Okay, so here are the formulae for the other annuities that are also payable peacefully. I hope you found this video useful and interesting and if you did, please don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Thank you so much.